Hi, and welcome everyone. I can't believe this is our last class. Um, if you are new to joining me, my name is Sarah Ivanhoe, and I'm the yoga director here for USC. And we've been doing a series called Yoga for Stress Relief. <laughs> when I came up with the idea of the series, I had no idea how much I would need it myself. Um, and we've just been kind of plugging away week by week, and I can't believe it, but here we are at the very last week. Um, but I'll just say that just because yoga for stress relief is ending does not mean our stress is going to be ending. Um, we are gonna be continuing to navigate all sorts of post pandemic um, craziness. It just uh, feel like we had so much anxiety going into the pandemic and now that things are starting to open up like we've got a whole new set of anxiety. And uh, so I really encourage you guys to uh, check out our YouTube channel. All of the sessions we've done here together have all been recorded and they're all up there and people have actually really been viewing them like some, some of them 500 to 1000 views already. So please do join and, and stick with it and keep your practice up as we go. So um, for our last class today, I'm gonna wanna give you a little bit more of an active uh, class. We'll be bouncing around a little bit but always through the lens of that this is meant to be stress relief, not exercise. Um, this is meant to be every movement, every breath to try to help sort of put the world on pause and just find a little sanctuary uh, for yourself. I'm seeing lots of chats. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's good. Okay. I can't, I can't read the chats from where I am. So if somebody was trying to give me a signal that like... You know, I was having some Zoom craziness or something. Okay, just making sure everything's all right. So good, let's start as we always do with a seated cross leg position, sitting up nice and tall to allow our eyes to close. And I'm gonna have to start today, if you would, with your hands on the floor in front of you um, and just kind of lean forward as much as you need to do that so that you can kind of lean into your hands for a moment and allow your eyes to close. And begin to deepen your breath. Get heavy in your hands. And right now, this moment of your hands on the floor, Just using the earth as sort of a conduit to hold and relieve and take away all of your stress and anxiety. Everything you're thinking and feeling, just send it down your shoulders, through your arms, out your hands, and into the ground. And open your eyes, keep your hands there and start to walk your hands forward just a little bit. Come into a gentle, easy forward bend. And as you drop your head forward and your hands are touching the earth, just remind yourself that the earth is one big magnet, right? The earth has the power of gravity. It is always pulling everything to it. So for a few more breaths, use that to your advantage and anything that's not serving you, just let it go with gravity, exhale it down into the earth. And then come all the way up. Feel better already. Let's change side to the legs. So whatever leg you have on top or in front, go ahead and switch legs with the other one. 
Um, bring the hands to the floor. Now I'm not doing like a forward bend yet. I'm just bringing my hands to the earth. Close your eyes. This is actually called Bhumi Sparsha Mudra. Bhumi means earth, Sparsha means touch. Um, Bhumi Sparsha Mudra. Touching the earth or calling the earth to witness. Touching the earth is what the Buddha did right before his moment of enlightenment. And it's a powerful tool for us. Everything that's been swimming around in your mind. Remember down the shoulders, through the arms, out the hands, into the earth, she can take it. And then allow your eyes to open and start to walk your hand forward and come into a forward bend as far as feels comfortable for you. Let your head drop. Long exhales to clear out the whole semester. Okay, and then come all the way up. Great. And now you can just choose whichever side you feel most comfortable sitting with. We're going to sit for a few moments and do a practice called Kapalabhati breath, a bellows breath, or sometimes very close to uh, what's called a breath of fire. This is our quick, short spits of exhales. Um, and we're going to just do it for kind of a period of time. As we do these exhales, um, we want the exhale to feel like it's being done with the stomach. So the breath is going to be through your nose only, so no mouth breathing. And it almost feels, you know, like when you sneeze, like it's a quick, short, like a chew. Like you feel like your stomach kind of contracts and it's just out. And then you just sort of relax and breath comes in. And if you're a serial sneezer, you'll like a chew again. And you just relax and it happens again. So the, the emphasis is on the out breath and then you just relax and the new breath comes in okay so it's called breath of fire because uh, this is sort of igniting our fire center or solar plexus and we're doing it today to sort of uh, burn up and um, kind of peel off and away melt away that which no longer serves us so breath of fire is an energizing breath it's not a stress relief of calming, it's energizing, but the idea is that we have these bits of stress on us and uh, sometimes we need to actively get them away. Um, and Breath of Fire is great for that. Okay, so let's start it together. I'm gonna start it and then you can just kind of join in along with me. It'll all make sense as we get going. Mouth is closed, in breath through your nose, and we begin. Keep going. Now keep going. And if you feel like stuff is like flying out of your nose all of a sudden, you're not alone, that's normal. You can just give yourself a very glamorous, elegant wipe and then just keep going. Keep going. Yep, keep it going. And you'll notice that my belly is kind of making quick, short contractions. And the rest of me stays relaxed, right? You don't tense up for breath of fire. You stay relaxed because the idea is that tension is burning. Keep going. Mm 
Everyone deep breath in through the nose and hold it. Hold. Out through the mouth. Take a couple of natural breaths, close your eyes. Okay, and we're gonna do it again and just a little bit faster. So when I'm talking to you, I want you to keep the breath going, okay? Deep breath in through the nose. And here we go. Keep going. Make sure your jaw and tongue is soft. And as you speed up, as you start to heat up, close your eyes and start to imagine tension and stress melting off the body with every breath. Keep going. Deep breath into the nose and hold. Think about something you want to get rid of. Out through the mouth. A couple of natural breaths. Open your eyes. Okay, one last round. Deep breath in through the nose. A little faster this time. Deep breath into the nose. Hold, a little longer hold, hold it, hold. Out through the mouth. Natural breaths. Set your intention for your last practice. What do I want to clear out and let go of today? Okay. And then begin your ujjayi breath in and out through your nose, soft, hollow sound in the back of the throat. Let's continue this ujjayi breath for the rest of our practice. We're gonna get going. So let's move on to hands and knees. And start with a little cat cow, lifting the sit bones up, chest up as we inhale. And then round the spine as we exhale. And continue back and forth for a few rounds. Great. 
And then let's go opposite arm and leg, lift up your right arm and left leg. And the toga static pose, but continue to breathe as you hold the static pose. So in and out through your nose, try making that hollow sound. And then release and let's go left arm, right leg, left arm, right leg, lift it up. And I'm making this hollow sound because it helps to clear the tension out of the corners of the body, right? And when we have smooth breath, it's more soothing on the nervous system. and release great from here let's curl the toes under and come into our first downward dog of the day press our hips up and back squeezing the arms straight allow my head and chest to relax here and then i'm going to pedal my legs slightly so i'll press my right heel down as i bend my left knee i'll press my left heel down as i then my right knee, and I'm gonna go back and forth a little bit like this. Opening up the calves, opening up the Achilles, the ankles, feeling all the little bones in the feet. It's really only yoga that has us barefoot and feeling all the little micro muscles in the feet. So press the Heels down, squeeze your thighs back, try to pull the body back up and away from the hands. Great, let's come back down to the knees. You're gonna sit back on the heels, come up to a kneeling position. Let's try a shoulder stretch, your right arm up over your head, bend at the elbow, left arm's gonna grab onto that right elbow and pull it back. I want you guys to remember this shoulder stretch. A lot of us are just, you know, doing Zoom meetings and uh, so many classes sitting, everything sitting in front of a computer. You can do this while you're in the middle of a Zoom class. Maybe turn your camera off so your teacher doesn't uh, <laughs> get upset. But I encourage you to at least once an hour do some sort of shoulder stretches, right? Let's get side two, left arm up and over at least once an hour, some sort of physical movement to sort of shake up the monotony of the day. And this is just a classic shoulder stretch. I encourage you guys to do this one at least once a day. Great, and then release. I'll slide the hands forward and let's come back into another downward facing dog pose. Great, and from here, let's bring the feet together. Take the right foot up to the ceiling, keeping your right leg straight, pulling your whole body back through your right heel. Release that right leg down. Take the left leg up. So both legs right now, both legs are very straight and pressing through both heels. I'm trying to pull my body backwards. It's as if the heels could pull the whole body. And then release. I'm gonna take my feet about hip distance and walk the hands back towards my feet. Bend the knees a lot. Each hand is gonna grab onto an elbow. I'm gonna let my head hang. And this should be pretty much the most relaxed forward bend that we do, the most relaxed standing forward bend that is. So the knees are bent and I'm just gonna to rock to my right and rock to my left. And maybe I'll give my head a little shake no. And I start to feel uh, the back of my neck releasing. Back to your ujjayi breathing. Let's 
stay heavy through the heels. Walk your hands forward. Great, and this time you're gonna take your feet um, a little bit uh, wider, distance of the mat. So the outer edges of the feet are lined up with the outer edges of the mat. I'm gonna take my right hand now to the center of my mat. My left hand is gonna reach down and through and grab the outside of my right ankle. So with my right hand, the hand forward, I'm pushing forward and away. Both heels are pressing back and down and then my left arm is helping me guide myself forward and through. Okay, and then release. I'm gonna take my left hand centered now. My right hand's gonna slide through and grab onto my left ankle. Okay, great. And then I'm going to release and I'm back to downward facing dog. Excellent. Now I'm taking my feet hip distance apart. Again, walking my hands back towards my feet. This time I'm going to interlace my fingers behind my back, bend my knees and give the arms a squeeze forward and towards the floor in front of me. Ujjayi breathing. Feet stay as they are, I'm gonna release my hands down. And my hands are gonna go onto my shins just below my kneecaps. I'm gonna push my arms straight. So my chest is gonna pull forward with my shoulders back away from my ears. This is my inhale. And then I'm gonna exhale, slide the hands down the legs, letting the head drop to the floor. I'm gonna do a couple of rounds like that. So I'm gonna inhale, pull the chest forward. Exhale, round. Inhale, pull the chest forward. Holding a little deeper each time, maybe nudging myself in. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Stay heavy through those feet and walk the hands back into downward facing dog. Mm, great, okay, now we're going to bring the right foot all the way up to the hand, stay balanced on the back toe, drop the hips down, and we're just gonna stay in a lunge here. I'm gonna take my right foot to the right and bring both hands to the inside of the right leg. I'm pushing back through my back heel and I'm pulling forward through my chest. Smooth breath here. Great hands to both sides and back to down dog. And then left foot all the way to the hand. Take that left foot to the left. Both hands to the inside of the foot. I push back through my right heel and forward through the chest. And back to downward facing dog. Great. Give yourself a nice good squeeze and then come down to your knees and sit back onto your heels. I want to give you guys um, an option here is a little bit more of a kind of next step. I'm here in Vajrasana. So this is kneeling. But another option is um, a pose called Virasana, which I basically would come forward. I take my feet out to the sides and I slowly lower down and sit in between. 
Um, I will tell you that the first time I tried to do Virasana in my early 20s, it was like the most painful, crazy thing. I thought everyone was out of their mind. Now I actually really enjoy Virasana. Uh, but if this is not right on your knees, do not do it or do it for a moment and then just come back. So you're just kind of touching it. The whole point is we do want to be hitting all sorts of different little muscles uh, so that everything gets activated ultimately. Let's do another shoulder stretch. You're going to take your right arm up in front of your face. The left arm wraps under or around until they touch. Arms are going to lift up and forward. Drop your head into your arms. And we've done this one, I'd say, probably almost every class because I think it's so it's so good as a desk reset. Send some ujjayi breath into the back of the neck and between shoulder blades. Okay, and then release. Let's get the next side, left arm up, right arm wraps under. Arms are gonna lift up and then we drop the face in and breathing. Okay, nice. Now we're gonna go back onto hands and knees, do sort of the next level shoulder stretch of this is called the thread the needle. So on hands and knees here, I'm gonna take my right arm up and out to the side and then I'm gonna slide it all the way forward and through. So I get my right shoulder on the floor and then I wanna turn my face up and use my hand to kind of get more of my head and chest towards the ceiling. So my right, ear doesn't stay on the floor. I'm moving towards the back of my head, towards my whole upper back, ultimately being on the floor, which it hasn't been for some time, but we can still just do what we can. And then we leave. Great, let's go side two here. So we get the left arm out to the side, and then forward and through. So again, think of it as a twist. Ultimately, I mean, you know, years ago, I used to have both shoulders on the floor, both arms all the way on the floor, totally uh, in a full twist. Now we're just doing a little small version of this. Great, okay, I'll take it. And then we are gonna climb all the way onto our belly now. Do a little bit of uh, back strengthening exercises. So let's just do with our arms down by our sides. Let's lift up head, chest, shoulders, and arms. Right now I'm kicking my toes down. I'm cooking my tailbone down. Just lifting the upper body up. and release it down. Great, now let's take the arms out in front. A little limited with my space here. I'm gonna take my uh, right arm and left leg up. Actually, that'll work perfectly. I'm gonna bend my left elbow, give myself some room. Right arm and left leg, lift them up. I'm reaching out to get a little longer. And then release that forehead straight down. Keep that right forearm down, the left arm, right leg. Lift it up. And then release it down. Great, let's take a cobra pose. So uh, hands 
by the chest, elbows hug in, shoulders shrug back. I'm pushing my toes down, pushing my tailbone down, just lifting my upper body up a little bit and then maybe up a little bit more. And I'm gonna use my arms up a little more, but I'm gonna keep my elbows bent. And then release. Great, now I'm gonna do an upward facing dog pose. It starts like Cobra, my elbows hug in, shoulders back, I push down to the ground and I'm gonna push my feet down, lift my legs up, lift my chest up and my head up and then release down. Great, and then push back into hands and knees. Great, back onto hands and knees. Now we're going to add um, opposite arm and leg and we're going to add a little bit of a back bend to it. So we usually started with this as a warm up, right arm, left leg, lift up as a warm up. Now we're going to reach around, right hand grabs the left foot and then try to kick that foot up and back. And release it all the way down. Let's get side two, left arm, right leg. Add your breath up and back. Extend out. And then release, nice. Let's curl the toes under, press to downward facing dog. Nice. Okay, so from here, take the right foot all the way to your hand. Stay balanced on the back toes. Keep the left hand to the floor and take the right hand to the ceiling. Stretch the arms away from each other and add a few full breaths here. Release the right hand down, all the way back to downward dog and then left foot up to the hand. Come up on the right ball of the hand, left hand's gonna come to the ceiling. And we'll just reach the hands away from each other and reach the legs away from each other. And then release it down and back to down dog. Okay, great. I'm gonna bring the feet together, take the right foot to the ceiling. And this time allow that hip to open and bend that top leg, push through the heel. And then right foot, sweep it up to your hand, bring the left knee to the floor. Come into a low lunge by taking your arms up over your head. Holding it here for a few breaths. Hands to the floor and back to down dog. And um, let's get side two. Left foot's gonna go to the ceiling. Bend to the top leg, push through the heel. Left foot all the way to the hands, right knee to the floor. Sink your hips forward and down, arms are gonna come up.
and hands to the floor and back to dog. Great, we're gonna do another series. So right foot's gonna go to the ceiling and you can take it sort of however you like. You can bend the leg or take the leg high, whatever. Right foot all the way to the hands, left knee to the floor. Arms are gonna circle up. Let's move into a twist. Palms to the heart outside of your left arm, to the outside of the right thigh. Moving into a twist. Release the hands down. We're gonna walk that right foot forward a little bit. Straighten the right leg, pull the hips back and take an easy stretch over your right straight front leg. And when I say straight, I mean straight-ish, straighter. It doesn't have to go actually all the way straight. What only matters is you get a little stretch and that's enough. Okay, and then up on the fingertips and then send that right foot back. And let's uh, curl the toes under and press back to down dog. Let's get side two, left foot to the ceiling and then all the way to the hand, up into that low lunge. And palms to the heart and into the twist. And release the hands down. Take that left foot further forward. Flex that left foot and drop your whole body over that left leg. And then left foot all the way back. Let's again press back to down dog. And then let's walk the hands back towards the feet. And we're gonna take um, Padangustasana. So you're gonna take your middle and index fingers, grab your big toes. And you can bend your knees for this if <laughs> you need to bend your knees to grab your toes, which most of you do. You're gonna pull that heart forward. And then the elbows go out to the sides, top of the head to the floor, but then your sort of shoulders up away from the floor. So when you're here, you want to, even if your knees are bent, imagine you're kind of drawing your thighs up. You don't want your thighs to be like, blah, blah, blah. you want your thighs to be kind of tight and active and that's gonna help protect your knees. Pull the heart forward on your inhale. I'm gonna take Pada Astasana, so slide the, again, you can bend your knees for this. You slide your hand, flip the palm up, slide the hand underneath the feet. So the toes are actually stepping on the wrists. And then I use my toes to kind of grip the wrists a little bit. And with the knees bent, I pull my arms a little bit up. And this is gonna give me some traction on the wrists. A lot of us feeling a lot of wrist issues these days with so much uh, stuff on the computer. So definitely need to uh, protect those carpal tunnel. Oof, okay, and then release. Get the hands out of there and then bend your knees and slowly roll all the way up to standing. Just try rolling the shoulders up and back and around a little. And then roll the shoulders forward. Great. Let's do a little bit of head and neck. So just gonna roll my head up and to the right. 
And then a full circle. I'm gonna go one more time. Oh, this feels great on the neck. I'm gonna go side two. Laugh all the way to the left and around. Okay, excellent. Good. So go ahead and take the legs nice and wide. I'm just checking on our timing here for a second. Good. Okay, so the legs are gonna come wide with my toes pointing straight ahead, but my hands on my hips. I'm gonna lift the chest on the inhale and squeeze the legs nice and strong. I'm gonna fold forward and take my head and chest and the hands down towards the floor. This first one I always feel like is a little sensitive. So I'm just gonna kind of like just breathe here for a second. Okay, now come up onto the hands. You're gonna take your right hand to the floor right below your face and then the left hand up to the ceiling into a twist. Try pulling the hands up and away from each other. And then release that hand down. And we're gonna to move to side two. Okay, and release that down. And then once again, a forward fold. And you'll just notice a little more comfort moving in and out of this. Hold the heart forward on the in breath. Hands are gonna go to the hips and the out breath, and then inhale all the way up to standing. Let's take a triangle pose. You're gonna take your uh, right toes and point them out to the right. My left toes, I pigeon toe them a little bit. I'm gonna strengthen both of my legs, hinge at the hips. I start to take my body down and I always just pause here and do a check. How are my ankles feeling? How are my knees feeling? How are my hips feeling? Okay, I feel okay, then I move forward. I'm gonna put my right hand just below my knee on my shin. Again, if that feels fine, then I can lower it a little bit, lower it a little bit. It just kind of depends. It's going to be different each day. Bottom shoulder, I push it back behind me, right? Scoop that tailbone and butt under. And then I take my top arm up into a nice, easy, simple triangle pose. Pull the hands apart. Pull the feet apart. Extend through the top of the head. And a couple of deep breaths. Maybe taking the top arm up over my head to stretch out that side body a little more. Push down for the feet. Come all the way up to standing. Great, let's get side two. Gonna turn the back toes in, toes out. Great, and then arms are gonna come out to the side. Actually, no, we started with the hands on the hips and we're gonna start that way on side two. So I start by hinging at the hips. I'll pull the mat apart with my feet and I just kind of ease my way down here. And then once I feel comfortable, slide my hand just below the knee and slide it as far as comfortable for me. Remember bottom shoulder, not forward, but back. Scoop the tailbone under and almost feel like your body is back bending. Take that top arm up and I'm just gonna hold it here.
Top arm all the way up over the head. And then come all the way up. Great, let's fold forward again, hands on the hips. Inhale up the chest and fold forward. Once I'm down, I'm gonna keep my head down this time and bring both arms over to the left leg. Pull myself towards the leg and then try to spin up. So this will hit a little bit of different spots in the leg. And then back to center and over to side two. And then back to center. And then hands on the hips, shoulders back, coming up on the in-breath. Great. Okay, we're gonna move into half moon pose. So I'm gonna move myself over to the side of my mat a little bit here so I've got room. Turn my right toes out. And then I'm gonna, um, with my hands on my hips, I'm gonna bend my right knee and I'm gonna catch the balance between my right foot and my right hand. I look at the ground for balance. I step my back foot forward and I start to take that back foot up off the floor. As I do that, that back foot is flexing. And if I'm ready, then my bottom leg is gonna straighten, my bottom arm straightens. So I'm pushing through both heels. Right, we did that before when we're in down dog and now I take my top arm up. I wanna pull the hands away from each other. Add your ujjayi breath. Put the right hand on the hip, bend your front knee, step your Left foot back and come all the way up to standing. Let's go over to side two and come over to this part of the mat so we've got room to sort of get into it. You'll take the other side. Turn the toe out. I'm gonna look at the ground and be sort of at one with the ground here. This is how I balance. I look at a spot and then I don't look away. Bend the knee. And then I take my hand forward and to the side, lean forward. So I kind of drag my back foot in, flex the foot, and then I take the leg up, 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 up. My bottom leg starts to straighten. My hand and foot push the floor away. Your top arm reaches up. And to the hip, bend the front knee, step the foot back and come all the way up to standing. Great, let's take the legs wide. Again, we're gonna go in and out of our warrior two sequence. So let's start by taking my, um, I'm gonna take your right foot forward and back foot back. My back leg, I squeeze it straight and take my arms up on my inhale. And as I exhale, I'm gonna bend my front knee and take my arms parallel to the floor. Just check out your knee and make sure it's tracking straight. That's one, inhale up. Exhale two, the knee likes to cave in, so you gotta to work to keep it straight. Inhale. And exhale. Two more, more with the breathing, inhale. New energy in, clear some tension out. Inhale. And the last one will hold it, exhale and hold.
Inhale, come all the way up, parallel the feet. Bring the palms together at the heart, just for a beat. And we'll move to side two. Go ahead and take the other toes, point them straight out. Back foot, pigeon toe, back leg strong. Arms are gonna come up. So remember, this is about moving that energy. Inhale, your arms are up. Clearing out tension, exhale. In. Clear something out. In. Out. In. Out. In. And the last one out. Hold it here. Straight in the front leg, palms to the heart. Good. Let's once again go to side two. So take your right toes out, left toes in. Keeping your back leg straight and your back foot planted. This time you're gonna bend your front knee, come onto your uh, right forearm and take your top arm over your head. So you're in one long line. If it's comfortable, turn your face up. Pressing through the outer edges of both feet. Inhale up, and we'll get it on side two. Changing sides of the feet, bending that front knee and just dropping into the forearm. Top arm all the way up and over. Infuse the whole shape with breath. Inhale all the way up. This is going to be our last forward bend. Turn the toes in our last standing forward bend. Interlace your fingers behind you. Inhale up the chest and fold your body forward and the hands up and forward towards the floor in front of you. Push down through the feet, inhale, come all the way up. And then we're gonna draw the feet towards each other. Great, and then we'll come into a malasana, uh, a squat pose. So take your feet wide, your heels are in, your toes are out, and you're gonna bend your knees and sit your hips all the way back and down. Palms are to the heart. Couple of long breaths here. And then release your hips down. Mm, great, and then take the legs up. Let's just do a little bit of um, moving in and out of Navasana. So we're gonna inhale, expand. Exhale, squeeze the legs in, inhaling. Exhaling. Remember, this is not exercise. This is about moving stagnant, yucky energy so your body feels energized, strong, and can release tension. Excellent. Hug the knees in. You're gonna take your right leg forward, bend your left knee out to the side, squeeze your body towards over that right leg and begin to move into an easy forward bend here. Just gently. Good. 
come up from the forward bend, we're gonna move into the twist by taking that left knee up to the ceiling. Bring the foot to the outside of that right leg. Both hands behind you, inhale, lift to get tall. Take that right arm all the way up and then try to grab onto the outside of the leg, lifting your chest up. Chin down though, right? Close your eyes, get tall through the top of your head and breathe. And then gently release it. We're gonna move into a full Gomukhasana. So take your left heel to your, sorry, your right heel to your left hip, lining the knees up as much as you're able to, and then moving into a forward bend. So this is a little bit of a, a deeper version of the way we began our practice today. Come all the way up. You'll take your legs together in front of you. Inhale, expand, exhale. And again, just a few like this, reminding yourself that strengthening your center, your core, your belly is an act of self-care, right? It is an act of clearing tension and stagnation and toxicity out of the body so you can feel good. It may look like exercise, but it's actually something good for you and can be fun. Take that left leg forward, bend the right knee out to the side. Square your body to the front and you're gonna lower yourself down as far as is comfortable to you. We're here, just a few breaths. Come all the way up. Let's take that twist, right foot to the outside of that left side. Get yourself lifted nice and tall. Left arm is up and then into the twist. Great, and then release it. Let's get that hip opener. So that right leg is on top of the left. Square your body and then lower yourself down. Let your head drop. Come all the way up. Just to sort of end with a bang, we're gonna do one last round, just a few of them. Expand, inhale, and squish up. Just kind of, um, you know, like when you're at the end of a race and you sort of, you race right at the end just to kind of show your last little bit of strength. This is it, let's just get one more in. Hug the knees in, and you are done. Kind of put onto your back, let your legs flop open, arms out to the sides. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Let it out with a sigh. Close your eyes. Close your mouth. Let your breath start to settle down. And feel your whole body getting heavy into the floor. Remember the earth is magnetic and the earth is going to draw and pull away everything that no longer serves you. The 
The earth is always doing this, whether we notice it or not. It's always helping us out. Okay, I'm going to encourage you to stay here, relaxing as long as you like. But we are out of time and we are going to wrap up for today and we are wrapping up for this crazy semester of 2021. We will be talking about this for years to come and we'll be talking about how we made it through, what our challenges were, how we learned to meet those challenges. We'll be talking about the lessons we learned and the resilience that we built when we face challenges ahead. We'll be saying, oh, well, that's nothing compared to spring semester of 2021. Um, if I can make it through that, I can make it through anything. And, you know, I've had some real loss uh, through this pandemic as well. There's been some really real and very painful times and challenges. I lost a family member. And all we can do is to um, be grateful for the lives that have touched us and to try to um, be grateful for our own health and what we have now and to try to do the best we can and to put that good energy back out there and to move forward. So I just thank you all so much for joining me on this journey. It's just been an incredible semester together. And um, I will be sending you, uh, sending you newsletters, keeping you posted of all uh, Yoga USC activities. I just wanna thank you so much for all of the good energy and we'll catch you soon. Okay, thank you. Thank bye you, bye. thank you, thank you so much.